Good morning. I'm laughing to myself there because I had absolutely no idea what day it is, or date. And uh, the video had come on <laughs> before I had a chance to check my The 9th of April, can't see at the time of my watch, but Thursday, Thursday the 9th of April, live in Lanark, from Lanark Loch, there's a coolness in the air this morning, and uh, it's a bit overcast, and it's um, a wee bit dreek, but not that bad, it's not that bad, so, good morning Carella, how are you? Hope you're well. So, we've been doing some vlogs on fear of change. And I'm wondering how everyone's getting on. Out there, we're moving into almost the end of the second week. Come Monday, we'll be into week three. And I met a guy when I was walking along the path there, which I meet in the morning sometimes with his dog. And I said, how are you getting on? He said, yeah, good, I'm getting used to it now. I said, what are you getting used to? And he says, I'm getting used to the change. I went, the change that's the change that's that's happened. The change that's happened or happening. I went, oh, that's excellent. And he says, aye, aye, I'm getting there. And in Scotland, everybody says, that. how are you getting on? Aye, good, I'm getting there. And since I was little, I remember folks saying it, and I used to think, where are you getting to? And I'm 47 now, and that little child in me, the minute somebody says, um, and I say, how are you getting on? Hi, I'm getting there. I'm like, ah, where? Where are you going? So, um, fear of change. So, fear and change are two very distinctively different components that we're working with. Fear... Um, Fear can keep us very stuck, it can be very constrictive, or indeed it can have a positive effect which will allow us to get out of danger. Now, oh, how do we break this up? So, okay, one of the things that's compromised is our immune system through fear, through stress. Okay, it's one of the components and by agreeing our immune system is something that we should really pay attention to and keep keep a close eye on. Now, we've got two immune systems um, in our bodies. We've got a we've got an immune system that is there to protect the threats, the predators that are going on in the inside, and we've got an immune system which protects us from the predators in the outside world. Okay, so the predators in the inside world are viruses, flus, bacterias. The predators that we experience in the external world are tigers, lions. Okay, threats like that. Now, if those were balanced, and most of us are not, then our internal immune system would be firing on, on all cylinders and we would have a better chance of fighting off any internal threats, viruses, bacteria, etc. Okay? So, when we're walking about in this Western world, this modern world, we are constantly under a perceived threat of something external going to get us. Now, that three fear of something external that's going to get us could be deadlines that's put on us from our boss. It could be the bus that nearly run us over on the road. It could be the credit card bill, it could be the mortgage bill, it could be that we're out of work, it could be that we don't have any money to pay our rent this month, it could be that we're, we've got no, nobody's telling us how long this is going to go on for. And, um, you know, even if somebody was to turn around and say, OK, it's going to go on to the 1st of June, we know, we then know, we have that information that we know that we can gravitate towards that point and do whatever it is that we need to do to get there. But right now, Boris Johnston's been taken into hospital. The person that's been put up to look look out for his affairs. Um, is he going to... I heard Mor uh, Piers Morgan. Are you going to make a decision? 
um, is it going to be addressed? And we just didn't get the feeling that he was confident in his delivery of being able to give us that. So there's fears. So I'm talking about external fears right now and how those external fears compromise our immune system. We've got two immune systems. We've got an immune system that takes care of the bacteria that's trying to, the predatory bacteria that's trying to, uh, that's getting into our bodies. And we've got external, our immune system that, our immune system that fights off predators in the external world. Now, I've got the flu. I don't. Why did I even say that? Delete that program. I don't have the flu. But let's just say, I don't, I'm conscious I don't even want to say I've got something in case I upload that, but let's just say I've got a tummy bug, right? Let's just say I've got a, an upset stomach, right? So I've got an upset stomach. My immune system is going in. Good morning. Morning, Keeney. Corinne. Um, I was thinking about Corinne yesterday. I went to school with Corinne. She's been tuning in most mornings when she can. So it's nice to see you think you're there. It just feels as if you're across. Mind you, I like to throw things at you because I think you're at a desk across from me. I like putting rubber bands and all that at you like we did when we were at school. Now, what I'm saying is I've got, I've got, I don't, I do not have anything wrong with me. But let's just say my internal immune system is weakened, okay? Corinne, this might be quite good for you to listen to. We're talking about two different types of immune systems that we have. We've got an immune system that looks after the predators that's trying to get into us in the internal world. And we've got, morning Victoria, and we've got an immune system that's protecting us from the predators in the external world. Predators in the external world predominantly would be tigers, but now they've became credit card bills. Um, so many external factors. So... If we've got an issue going on, and a bacterial issue in our gut, and our immune system's compromised internally, right? And then we've got a fe an overriding external fear going on, okay? Credit card bills, illnesses, worries, media promoting fear all the time. Fear, 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 virus killing people. Uh, this 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 uh, coronavirus, it's a killer. That we, we've got that external fear. Now, so I've got this bacterial infection in my gut, and I'm running away from a tiger. Okay, where's all my energy going to go? Is all my energy going to go to fighting my tummy bug, or is all my energy going to go into my legs? to help me run away from that tiger. No brainer, right? Absolute no brainer. All our energy is going to go to running away from the tiger. So if all our energy is going away, going to broad, broad running away from the tiger, then we don't have any energy to, um, to build up our immune system, okay? And make our immune system effective enough than it needs to be to be dealing with the internal. So, in illnesses like cancer or the fear of death there, isn't it? Anybody turns around and says you've got a life-threatening condition, okay, which I actually think if you've only got two or three months to live, I think there should actually be a law that the doctor doesn't tell you how long you've got to live. Because in my experience, the minute they tell you that, you die in half that time, so better not to know. So, because what the mind then starts to do is the mind starts to get into fear. Fear of leaving, everybody fear of dying, what's dying going to be like, it's the unknown, we don't know what that's like, da 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 You have absolutely no energy to fight internally, your immune system is totally compromised, it's redundant, so we've got fear, I was talking a little bit about fear, now, this virus that's around, what do we need? We need a healthy immune system, okay, so if you want a healthy immune system, what you've got to do is stop it being compromised by fear, okay? I think at a biological level, when we get into a, a state of fear, I do believe, I would need to consult the textbooks, but I do believe that the that the arteries going into the gut get strangled, stopped, so that no energy and all the blood goes through the body to the arms and the legs to help us get out of the way of the threat, okay? Next thing. Change. So, change. What's going on in the world right now? 
I think the word that's going around, it's probably been used before this pandemic, but everybody's saying unprecedented, these unprecedented times. We're in a huge shift, um, a sh huge global shift in consciousness. Um, in a lot of ways, we're, we've, it's well overdue. We've been moving from the Industrial Revolution. We're now in homeschooling. We're sort of, we're in that no man's land right now um, of the schooling system that was predominantly set up for the Industrial Revolution. We're now in a digital, we're now in a digital world. And basically, so many of us have been resisting the analogue world that we've inhabited for so long to move into this digital age. Look around you, look what's happening, oh, start to open our eyes. Now, that's okay, it's okay what's going on. But if you stay stuck thinking that everything's going to go back to normal, that everything's going to go back to the way it was, I'm sorry, I just absolutely do not see that at all as happening. So the programming that we've had, the way that we've, the belief systems, the way that we've been taught to think, the way that we think, all the things that we thought kept us safe, okay, have just two weeks ago all been taken away from us. That's how quickly, okay, that's how quickly, I'm not anxious, but I'm very angry. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, hi, Laurie. Um, so how do we set ourselves up for that? So we became habitualised in our thinking. We got up, we put on our shirt, we go to work. We come back, if we've got a wife, we come in, kiss her on the cheek, we sit in the chair, we open the paper, we do what we do, we wait for our dinner, we might help make the dishes, do the dishes, and then we get up and we do all that over again, okay? Um, now, a lot of people would actually would call that a comfort zone, and when you start to break that down, how comfortable is that? It's not that comfortable. So, the way through this, is to, 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 to maybe just at least humour me that those habitualised patterns of behaviour they've went into our subconscious mind and they're overlapping programmes that have been uploaded into our unconscious, subconscious mind, non-conscious mind okay from pre-birth so I was talking about that yesterday last trimester in pregnancy. So from the la our brain is switched off. We our brain's not really functioning, although it starts developing very, very early on in utero. Okay, but our brain doesn't actually come online. Our brain doesn't come online until the last trimester of pregnancy, and then it comes out into the world. So same, you go to PC world, you buy a computer, you bring it home, you turn it on, you boot it up. Doesn't know what to do because you've not uploaded any programs to it yet. Doesn't do Word, you've not uploaded Word. Doesn't have a security virus virus alert, does it? Right? So it doesn't have a McAfee. Studies have started to look into children's McAfee in the gut. That children that were caesarean sectioned have got a compromised immune system from day dot. You know, so if a child's on natural birth, it comes out with a McAfee security or, you know, whatever, a virus protection. But children that were caesarean, studies have now been done that their, their immune system was actually compromised before they were even born. Anyway, I'm going to way off tangent here, but our subconscious mind has been programmed with limiting beliefs and beliefs and just patterns of behaviour that are hereditary and been passed down for generations and if not, indeed, many generations before us, okay? And then we come in and by the age of seven, we're all uploaded and then we start to go out into the world and all we start to do is work from what... We work from our scripts, schemas, unconscious and subconscious programs. How do we change that? We become conscious of it. Okay, wherever we direct our attention, energy will go. But what does that mean we have to do? It means we have to think. It means we have to use our prefrontal cortex. We have to use our planning and thinking brain. And we have to put 100% laser focus towards it. Okay, because that overrides the subconscious programs. Now, don't get me wrong. The subconscious programs are still going to come in and... And, and try and take over, okay? Um, I was about to say evening, Lisa. Oh, somebody said, somebody sent me a message there. So with direct attention, 
and our conscious mind, we direct it on and that overrides the subconscious patterns of behaviour. Now, when I was challenged to do these, these vlogs, to do these vlogs for the month of April, okay, I went, right, I need to think about them. So I had to get out of all my fears, my subconscious fears, oh, you can't do that. Who are you to do that? Who do you think you are? Right? Um, fear of fear of success, fear of failure, fear of everything. It all started to come up. All my programming, all my subconscious programming started to come up, okay? And um, I started to have to direct my conscious attention towards what I was doing. Day before I was due to do them, I chipped my tooth. I chipped my front tooth. Oh, God, I thought to myself, I can't do this, right? So it's, it was like almost, and I went, no, you need to burn through it. It doesn't matter about your tooth, okay? But any time we step towards doing something different, it's almost like the world's got this sense of humour that it'll do everything it can in its power to stop us from getting to the destination, right? I am going to, I'm going to make an appointment and I'm going to see a therapist. I'm going to change. I'm going to break out of this bad habits, these relationships that I'm in. Okay, right, that's it. I've made my appointment car won't start that morning the bus doesn't turn up the train doesn't turn up okay it's almost like the world is is feeding back no you're not making these changes we don't want you to change we don't want you to start thinking okay something that just came into my mind there about so for those of you that didn't tune into fear and the compromised immune system and the two immune systems and things like that right the opposite of fear, let's call that love. So fear, um, you might have heard me speaking over these weeks about, uh, uh, about things being constrictive and being expansive. So fear is quite a constrictive experience. Okay, love is quite an expansive experience. My language comes from there because as part of my postgraduate, I studied personal construct psychology by George Kelly. So, um, and that's how we construe our how, how we construe our environment. So that's programmed into me, and that's how it comes out in my language. So, love, love is an expansive experience. Okay, when we're in love, our immune system is functioning optimally. Okay. Now, when we're in love. There's chemicals, okay? Who is the drug dealer? Who is the chemist inside us? When we're in love, there's feelings of oxytocin, the bonding chemical. I've been speaking about that. I, I think that's a fantastic chemical. It's, uh, it creates bonding. It creates security. Um, it creates dopamine. Love creates dopamine. Um, it creates... It creates many, many different chemicals. There's actually a chemical that it produces that makes us more attractive to our partner. I forget the name of that. I'll look that up when I go in. And um, the other thing that being in love does is uh, to, to assist our immune system is it actually creates a, oh, a hormone, a growth hormone, okay? It creates a growth hormone inside us. So love versus fear is a very, very powerful thing. Fear creates cortisol, adrenaline, it's constrictive, it calcifies the cells. It calcifies the cells, which then means that the mitochondrial of the cell, which creates the electrical potential and the oxygenate potential of the cell, if that cell's been hardened, it makes that difficult to function properly. So, fear or love. Well, what if I'm not in love? What if I don't have a partner? And this is what came to me this morning when I was walking uh, before. I think very biblical in a lot of terms. I'm not here to throw it down your nut and I'm not one to convert you and bring you into Christianity in any way, shape or form. I just, for me, it's my go-to book and um, I love reading the, 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 the writings and the wisdoms that's in the Bible. And I love this. I want to leave you with this. In the Old Testament, there was Ten Commandments. I think the Ten Commandments are great, right? Nothing up with them. Okay, but I do believe, and theologically, bring on the argument, I'm perfectly happy to have that, but what I'm suggesting is that the Old Testament, the the, 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 the Ten Commandments were written, uh, they were written to the ego, they were written to talk to the ego, because if you look at the time, um, I don't know what was that, six or eight hundred years before time, Christ, it was written um, for the Babylonians as they exiled from Mesopotamia, so they were very hedonistic, and they were right after bangers, so they needed these guidelines to, to follow. 
But then we come into a more new, new, new testament perspective. Okay, and the disciples said to Christ, they said, Christ, what's the best commandment for us to follow? And Christ went, none of them, they're all crap. Right, he says, just dish the Ten Commandments, fling them out the window, right, just get rid of them. Okay, what commandment? He says, I'll give you one commandment to rule over all commandments. I give you the commandment of love. I give you the commandment of love. Look at the science of what love does to your body. So, do you love yourself? Do you know that you are loved? Have you got a relationship with a higher power to see you through this? Or are you constricted by fear, panic? I'm losing 20% of my wages. I've not got any money coming in. I don't know when this is going to happen. I don't know when this is going to end. Okay, I absolutely agree. What I'm talking about is difficult. But if we don't make that jump, we're going to get left behind. Um, we are going to get left behind because the world is changing faster than we can commute. Compute? Commute? We won't be able to com commute it. My thoughts and fantasies and visualisations when I'm going through, and I've said this for a, for a long time, those people that, that, that socialise with me and speak with me, and um, since kind of the, the Mayan calendar stuff of 2012, I said it's not happening in 2012, it's going to be 2023, 2023, 2024. I've had that date in my head for years. I believe fully that we are going to be living in a world by 2023, 2024, that we have no... We're not going to be able to understand it. Change is coming. Look at mobile phones. Look at technology. Look at where we've got to in 20 years. We are on the brink of a digital revolution that is going to completely and utterly change our reality beyond comprehension. Musk gets away with putting these um, satellites up into space. Self-driving cars. All that stuff, it's going to happen. It's absolutely going to happen. Who would have thought, you know, who would have thought that we would have been, I would have been, I've got the capacity to broadcast from a phone the way that the BBC used to have to have trucks, big microphones with a furry bit in the end of it. It's happening. We're in it. What I'm suggesting is please, those people that are willing Accept the change that's coming. Let's not fear it and let's get ready for it. So fear of change. Two different components. I've done my full walk round the lock with you this morning. Thank you very much for tuning in. I absolutely hope that what you heard was helpful and that there's some nuggets of wisdom in there that you can use. Tonight at 8 o'clock, I am going to be speaking with Francis Devine. Um local guy, runs a charity in Gambia and we're going to speak about how the coronavirus has affected and the implications that it's got for getting money and uh, resources into Gambia. So if you're interested to, to listen to me and Frank having a yak on the couch at 8pm tonight, we'll be there. I wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you very much for listening in and remember, the choice is yours. It's up to you what way you want to play this. I know what way I'm going. 